Good evening, everybody. It is Dr. Angela Kudger, and I am here with the amazing Dr. Aris Latham. And Dr. Aris is an amazing, amazing founder of Sunfired Foods Institute. Now, tonight, we're going to be talking all about the science and energy of food. Now, if you caught, we've been catching our live stream lately, we've been really digging into juicing and we've been digging into raw food and how food is information for the body. Well, tonight, we're going to go just a little bit deeper with that conversation with someone who is very well known in this industry. So, as soon as you get on this live stream, two things let us know that you can hear us, let us know that you can see us, and let us know that everything is actually working. Working very, very well. So, Dr. Aris, we're going to be talking tonight about some of the amazing things you do with Sunfired, why you founded Sunfired, and what it has done over the over the uh, the large amounts of time that it's it's been around. So, really quickly, I know that you have a massive following, right? Everybody, everybody knows it, right? Um, some of the people watching may know you as well, but can you tell us a little bit about? Sunfired and why you actually created it. Wow. <laughs> well, you know, it's it's uh it's been easy because really I developed uh myself basically through the sunfired uh vibration in order to defend my life. Mm. So it's been self-defense, very selfish, very focused very much into protecting the life I was born to love. Mm -hmm. So that, that, that's the beginning and the end. So it has impacted quite a few people, you know, because this is what I've seen, you know, throughout, you know, naturally that you don't really say like those of us who call ourselves vegan, mm -hmm. knowing that that's supposed to be, uh, you know, because you, you love animals, you want to protect animals, you don't want to bury them in your gut as, you know, their graveyard, you don't want to wear their leathers, their skin, you don't want to use uh, prophylactics that, that are com come from animal, you know, tissues and host and host and host of things. I took the other avenue. Mm. I could possibly be, be the most endangered animal on this on this planet as, as a species. So if I protect myself, the other animals really don't have to be concerned about me and I don't have to be concerned about them. We meet each other along the way. The cat, you know, may run to me or run away from me and, you know, things like that. So we have that mutual, you know, non-verbal, you know, spiritual understanding. So does the chicken and the snakes and the goats and, you know, the hippopotamus and all of these animals, we know where our lines are, are drawn. So let me focus on me and we can continue with that journey, you know, and grow and build on it. So in the 60s, you know, college campus, USA, New York City, you know, it was about the revolution. Mm. You know, it was about, you know, as a sister wrote a book appropriately named at that time and it's still quite valuable. It was a booklet. So, you know, it didn't get out. <laughs> so many may have not heard about it, but her name is Lena Mobley. Lena Mobley. The book is Food as a Weapon, mm. 1969 or 68, somewhere around there. Yeah, she happened to be, you know, in the grapevine, you know, from D.C. I'm in New York. So we circulated, we read that book and, you know, and other books, you know, similarly. So based on this, you know, as revolutionaries, we said, well, you know, we're not going to Vietnam, you know, kill some people over somebody's rice war. You know, uh, we're going to go back to the land, you know, hey, hanging out with the hippies, but moving in the power of, you know, black power, black power, you know, clenching the fist no. and everything, wearing the Afro, the dashiki, you know, sandals, mm -hmm. and, you know, it was about black power. So part of that, so that, you know, culture, you know, of a uh, 
hell no, we won't go, <laughs> you know, right. Vietnam right. War, you know, uh, in the blood, you know, I'm not going there. I'm not going to uh, go die on the battlefield. But yet, you know, living in my community, living in bed living in the ghetto and, you know, the apples that I see there and the apples that I see out in Bayside, New York, the suburbs where I'm going to school. Like, wait a minute, something is not right here. You know, <laughs> you know what, what, what we got on the corner, you know, candy stores and selling all this stuff and you go out there, you see a different thing. Mm -hmm. So anyway, uh, that's what it's been all about. Yeah. That's what it still is. You know, it's about the revolution, you know. And, uh, and, 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 yeah, and our revolution was not, you know, uh, as you would typically associate with the word revolution in modern times, it was about, you know, defending our lives through what we put in our mouth, you know, period. <laughs> I absolutely love that. There is a there is another, um, an amazing raw juice product um, program out there. And one of the things that they, that the premises that they built this on, and it's fairly new, is that they are, you know, the same thing that there's a, that every time you vote for what's on your plate and what you put in your body, you are starting a re revolution, literally, right? Mm -hmm. um, you are better off, there, you are better off winning any war by choosing to buy what is proper for your body to stay healed, healthy, whole. Um, versus mm -hmm you know, picketing and protesting with Big Pharma and all these, you know, for, you know, against the, you know, policies and all these different things, you're better off voting properly with your wallet by what you're choosing to put in your body. And I absolutely love um, the way they put that, right? Uh, and, and it really does drive home to the fact that when when this thing, COVID-19, when this thing is, has happened and it it's kind of, it's here and it's present, right? It is ever present for a lot of people. Um, it is something that has forced people, like you said, to mind your own body, right? It has forced people to really take a look at how they've been living, what they've been mm -hmm. taking in, whether mm -hmm. it's physical, mental, metaphysical, spiritual, they're mm -hmm. all these things go into who they are and what they choose in terms of food, right? Um, and so some of them have been able to take a long, stern look at what they're buying into, right? Whether that has been sickness or whether that has been healing, you know, they've bought into it multiple times. And so mm -hmm. I love um, that you have built your life. I'm ever so grateful to be able to sit down with you because I love that you built your life on this premise and for, have done so for almost half a century, right? Over half a century at this point. Uh, so <laughs> I'm so grateful for that. And so when you guys, so really quickly, I'm gonna run to the comments real quick. Uh, Melinda Sajora says, good evening, Legacy family. Good evening, Melinda. Um, she's Shawana Renee says, defending our lives with what we put in our mouths. Listen, yes, indeed. Uh, she says, Dr. Angela Cudger, you better say that. Yes, indeed. And so we're going to talk a little bit tonight because, uh, Baba, you are so full of knowledge, right? And I, I love the fact that, uh, and I'm native to Atlanta. I was born here. I was raised here. I've lived a lot of places, but I'm back home now. We have a massive raw foods and vegan community here uh, that is metaphysically tuned in, uh, that is tapped in, that is turned on. We have access to some of the amazing, amazing elders and amazing people in the community that can teach us, that can show us, and that can guide us. And why people don't have that where they come from, right? Um, and I think that's one of the reasons we, get, we we're getting kind of an influx here in Atlanta, especially near the AUC where I grew up, um, of a lot of people kind of in that space wanting to get that knowledge. But I'm so grateful that we have you here tonight to kind of share some light on the different types of foods and what the informa what information it actually gives the body. And so I'm grateful to you to be able to sit down and do this. Absolutely, absolutely grateful to you. Um, I was watching a video by you, right? One time. So first of all, I'll tell you, someone actually sent me a message uh, from Instagram, right? They kept firing a message saying, come look at this, come look at this, come see this. <laughs> what is this? Right. Um, and so I looked at it and they were like, go to his zoom call. You need to go get on his zoom call. And I'm like, okay, let me go check this out. 
<laughs> really amazing the things that you do. And I was blown away. I was like, I gotta sit down with this man. Like, how do I not know this person? Like, we're all, are we both on the same planet? I'm sure we are. Right? So I was like, I need to know this person and and really bring forward what they're doing in the community even more so um, than what you the massive work you've already done all over the globe. Um, and 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 I'm ever so grateful for that. So and I was I was then I started binge watching because that's just what I do, right? I want to see it. I want to feel it. I want to know it, right? Uh, I dive in, right? And so. I want us to talk a little bit about the different types of food. Um, you were teaching about how different foods that grow underground have a different kind of energy than those that, that are at arm's reach, than those that are above arm's reach, and how these different foods, when they go into our body, send a certain kind of message, whether that message is to cleanse, whether it's to ground. Can we dig into some of that tonight? <laughs> Wow, that's that's a that's a big vault to go into in a few minutes. You know? right, right. Can we like glaze over it, right? Can we can we like glaze like right over it and kind of get into just a little bit of it? Because I know that there are a lot of people looking for that information. They're like, I know what coconut water is. I know I should drink it for physical reasons, but it's such a deeper level to it. Um, and I'd really like to kind of dive into that. So like the mag what makes magnetic foods, um, what, what categorizes those and what's categorized as electrical foods. Can we talk about that? Okay. So this, uh, this is all about the, the science of sun-fired foods. As you know, sun-fired is a word I coined in 1979, uh, living in Harlem, uh, set up the, uh, basically a co-op you know, the sun-fired co-op, so we can get organic foods in Harlem in, you know, 1979, you know, it was, you know, what was going on in Harlem back there, it's like, you know, no people's territory, you know, junkie on the corner and this and all of that going on, but I chose to, 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 to live in Harlem after migrating from Tanzania and, you know, prior to that, being in California up on top of the uh, Kilimanjaro mountain. Not, well, I went to Tanzania to the Kilimanjaro, but in the US I, I was at uh, Arrowhead Mountain, you know, up there above this, you know, San Bernardino. But, you know, uh, this was after like about, you know, three years into eating all living foods, you know, which is what I call sun-fired foods. Sun-fired uh, basically connotes that the food is cooked by the sun mm -hmm. and is done through the growing period. So the growing period is the cooking process from the time uh, the plant blossoms, you know, the flowers coming out, you know, uh, setting the stage for the fruits to, you know, to, to come. That's the cooking period there, you know, but before that, of course, there was the seasoning and, you know, all of the stuff, you know, pre-soaking, you know, germinating, sprouting, you know, to even get to a tree or a little uh, herb in the, in, in the ground, you know, it's a big, it's a lot that, that goes into preparing our food, you know, so the sun comes every day if you're living, of course, uh, you know, in harmony with nature. You know, because you have your greens in the backyard, you know, you got the fruits probably even in the front of the house, you know, lighting up the place constantly, you know, but we've lost that some time ago, you know, many years ago. But, you know, it's been coming back. Uh, so it's based on what I call now the uh, sun fired feasting, fasting, and healing system mm. where you can just feast. <laughs> on the foods that were originally intended for human consumption that are available to us today. You know, the list has really gotten down and then they have expanded mm -hmm. into different directions with hybrids and yep. all kinds of other stuff. We know, we know about that. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so these foods I, I term, you know, the uh, electromagnetic foods, you know, some being high in electrical energy, the other extreme high in magnetic energy and then the balance, you know, the electromagnetic ones. So the electrical foods are the higher moisture food, the foods that contain the higher uh, volume of water, period, you know, and, uh, and generally they grow higher than other foods, you know, above our arm's reach. So the highest grown food on the planet that has the most amount of water in it, 
okay? Coconut water, the water from the young coconut that uh, has no jelly, no meat, no pulp, nothing at all other than water. This is perfect water ready for human consumption. And you see it comes from a breast. The coconut, that nut is a breast, <laughs> you know, that comes off of a tree and the type of tree you see that it is, you know, it's like an obelisk, mm -hmm. you know, phallic, a male energy, you know, bearing 300 breasts, 400 breasts. You know, this tree, this man did a lot of work going down into mother earth. <laughs> into the bosom of the earth, pushing through his roots <laughs> down to the stream of life <laughs> to get a, a transfusion from the earth, not going looking for petroleum and all of that other stuff to destroy <laughs> us, destroy the earth, but getting water from the stream of life, a not, 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 never ending stream. Mm -hmm. So with this masculine energy in this you know, beautiful, what we call, you know, in, in, in certain traditional religions uh, or culture are uh, the Pachamama, you know, the father, <laughs> you know, mother, <laughs> you know, unity. Mm -hmm. And then getting this powerful water and all engineered by the sun. Right. I love all that. Engineered by the sun. The sun draw that water out of the earth. And, you know, the earth is, is anchored by a magnetic energy that's pulling that coconut tree, the roots, pulling it down into the earth. Mm -hmm. And as you see it, as high as it is above, so it is below. Mm -hmm. So you get that energy, that balance of the sun and the earth doing their dance, doing their symphony. And here, you know, the water is being drawn up. It's, it's, it's alkalinized, it's, it's uh, distilled, it's purified, it's filtered everything without destroying the life, without killing the minerals, you know? So all of this is what it's really all about. And then on the other extreme, you see you have the foods that are growing deep down into the earth. Mm -hmm. Things that we may now mistaken as food, that magnetic energy, the cassava, the potatoes, the yams, and all of these types of things. These are just anchors to balance. <laughs> you know, to balance this tree, to balance this, this whole, you know, vibration. So the, the harmony of all of this work to bring us these electrical foods that are high in moisture, the higher the moisture, the higher the electrical current, the higher the electrical vibration in the food, the more suitable it is as a cleanser. Mm -hmm. Since obviously our body is a reflection of, of the planet. You know, we are the micro, you know, we're 70% water just like our, the earth is 70% water. So, and then we have these relationships <laughs> with other, you know, family in the universe, the animals, the trees, you know, we give the trees, you know, our waste <laughs> and they give us back food, you know, and, uh, and we, you know, work with, with their waste to regenerate, <laughs> you know, the planet. So, but we have lost a lot of this. Of course, you know, I got first wind of this by being born in a forest, you mm -hmm. know, in Panama, in the Panama Canal zone, you know, uh, African families moving from the Caribbean to go build a canal for these folks. We went to Panama, my grandfather and grandmother, both sides of my family, because they met there to mm -hmm. build a canal, a waterway. <laughs> you know, flood a, a whole big part of a country <laughs> to create a, a channel to float ships from the Pacific, from the Pacific or Atlantic to the other side. <laughs> and coming through there, you know, on this journey that we have been on for thousands of years, going around building civilizations, building monuments, building countries, building governments, <laughs> building universities, building pyramids. Mm -hmm. So for us to be where we are today and seeing that, you know, growing up in that environment and living with nature, living with nature and building that relationship from day one, it has really positioned me to be in where I am today. You know, and I call myself basically just a walking tree. Mm -hmm. I am no different from that coconut tree that I embrace, giving it thanks and everything. 
But when you look at the opposite and the roots that we're consuming, the magnetic foods that are low in moisture, that are very dense, and not just the ones that are growing deep down into the earth, but some that are growing on other levels as well. Yeah. Primarily these foods that, that, that contain this element that we call starch. Mm -hmm. Starch. <laughs> a complex carbohydrate, or better yet, a complicated sugar or sugar base that we're supposed to turn into a simple carbohydrate into a sugar. And on the opposite end, we have the fruits, mm -hmm. which are the electrical foods. You know, these high moisture that, that I spoke about, you know, these are foods that got that energy to allow us to cleanse the body and even build it, regenerate it, rejuvenate it, and take it to whatever level it needs to be. When we look at the original natural and best foods for humankind, you know, uh, you could just attach one little label to it, you know, uh, the law of food, seed, seed yielding foods, the law of foods, period, seed yielding. So your food is supposed to yield seeds, bring yeah. seed or seeds with it, watermelon, cucumber, tomato, you name it. <laughs> And there you have a food factory. There should never be any starvation. There should be no scarcity. We should not even have to have been buying food. That's how we grew up over the centuries. Mm -hmm. You know, it's there. And there's too much avocados because the tree is constantly throwing at us and every avocado has another tree in it. Right. We're overrun by food. We should be we should be in a food forest, you know, that that we, we should be, they should be doing movies about this. Look at this one, but they show us stuff about, you know, birds and this that are strangling people based on some fantasy and, you know, all kind of other stuff. But look, we have lost it, period. We have lost it. So this electromagnetic foods, the high moisture, the, the, the dense food, not only with the ones with the starch, but also the ones with the fat, yeah. the protein. So the starches, the complex carbohydrates and the protein are the magnetic foods. But these foods, they serve some purpose, but we have to be selective in which ones are real foods and which ones are maybe just tubes or tubers, you know, or seeds for cereal grass, you know. And we grab the seed for the grass and cook the seed, call it, you know, rice and peas or whatever, you know, it is not, it is not going to be processed effectively in your body. Most of it is going to spoil, it's going to produce yeah. acid and send you up a whole nother place. So here is how we see, you know, the vibration, the energy of foods really affect us. So the electromagnetic energies of food, you know, uh, if we want to cleanse the body, we go high. <laughs> if we want to, if we, if we want to bury the body, put it down in the grave, then we go low. <laughs> okay. I love that. I lo Can you say that again, Dr. Aries? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it's recorded. I'm, I think this thing is being recorded because I can't say it like that again. This is the first time I heard that. <laughs> so if I try to if I try to, to, to say it, I might be lying. So let's let's go on the recording and get them a playback. You know, put let that quote go. You know, send it viral. That was you know? amazing. That was amazing, right? You know. uh, I, I, I really love this conversation because. I think that one of the one of the one of the most awakening moments for me was when I changed my diet. Um, and so coming off of meat and then off of cooked food and having these kind of waves of eating raw, but mostly eating plant based for several years now, I have noticed a complete shift in not just my ability to function and to focus, but also my ability to be able to tap into you know, meditations a lot deeper, being able to commune in, in different metaphysical spaces and different opportunities that come up for me. Um, and so it gives a completely new meaning to the word presence, right? Or presence, right? Um, um, talk a little bit about what has been one of the most profound experiences that you have had um, on the, um, the cleansing method that you use? <laughs> Wow, 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 wow. I Well, you know, I normally fast. Well, we always fast every night when we go to sleep yeah. for those eight hours. 
you know, that's why, you know, some of these languages, yeah, they try to be correct and proper. And, you know, when you wake up and you put something in your mouth for the first time, they call it your break fast. You know, but today, you know, it, the word has been vulgarized. So you hear it as breakfast. So what the heck is that? Some people put a definition on it of a meal that, you know, supposed to be high in cereals, complicated carbohydrates and stuff like that. You know, so when you when you get that, then it's a whole nother registry. But for myself, in terms of, of, of memory and so forth, and, you know, what comes to mind and all of these things, it's basically where I am right now. It's now, this present moment, you know, this present moment right here. This is a memory that I love right now. I don't have to go back too far to find a better memory than this one. You know, action, you know, thought, action, you know, and living is right now, right that. now, you know, trying to go back, trying to go forward and all of that. I don't want to miss this moment. Sitting here talking with you, I don't want to miss this moment. I don't want to go back, you know, 50 years ago when I first started eating this way. So this is, you know, the things that have really fueled me that I, I appreciate from living this way is that my, as a 72 year old, you know, as a 72 year old person that's been around, you know, and have eating this way, I would love, you know, when the show happens, you know, to go on big screen that they, you know, bring about six other 72 year old men. Nice. You know, nice. And, it's, and, and, and let's measure our statue, you know, measure our stature based on what each one of us have come to. This is where the reality is. You know, we could talk all kind of theory, all kind of philosophy, all kind of this, all kind of that. But, you know, here, take a blood test from me. Take a urine test. Take a test. Let's get in and let's get everybody else's. Everybody who say, you know, as my brother Chaka, he posted up one of my photos climbing a coconut tree. And everyone who said, like, you know, uh, what is it, bacon to this man? <laughs> you know, you better think twice. <laughs> you know, break out your health report card. Break out your, and let's see. It's in the facts. It's in the facts. You know, so, you know, my brain, <laughs> feel like I got a brand new brain. <laughs> you know? Hey. Because one of the things that I really noticed that sparked me with this is it was about four years ago. Because I said we fast every night, every day, but also I encourage people to fast once a week, 36 mm -hmm. hours, give the digestive system a rest so the body can focus on elimination. It's mm -hmm. about elimination. It's about going to the toilet, mm -hmm. <laughs> okay? <laughs> Letting it out and not based on because you put three square ones in yesterday that the, 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 the next one that came in the gate pushed out the other one at the bottom trap door, you know, mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff. You know, no, it's about reality. Mm -hmm. So then after my weekly fast, I also do a lunar fast, new moon and full moon. I do 36 hour fast, twice a month, 28 days. Then I do the... Uh, the the, the 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 weekly fast as well you know and also i do a seasonal fast three days on the solstice and equinox four times a year you know we're talking you know 70 80 you know days a week or a year in fasting so to added to that like five years ago i added my annual <laughs> event of the year which is fasting every year for the number of days that my life, my body has rotated, you know, around the sun. That's amazing. <laughs> so I, I did a 72 day fast starting November 1st and I broke it January uh, 15th this year, but I call it a feast. I don't even call it a fast anymore. Mm -hmm. I call it a juice feast. Mm -hmm. But when I did the second one, when I did the second, did it the second time, I think I was like 79 or, you know, somewhere out there. And uh, I'm up in a forest in, in, in Brazil. And I noticed that, well, number, number you know, uh, I noticed like after the first two weeks, I had lost like, you know, eight pounds. You know, it's like, wow, interesting, you know. And then uh, about, you know, 40 days later, you know, I lose like another two pounds, you know. And then like around day 45, I see that, cause I'm, you know, checking myself, you know, I'm checking my excrement, I'm checking my urine, I'm observing everything, you know? 
and I see that, uh, you know, around day 45, I had this massive bowel movement. And I'm like, man, what, what, what is all this? Well, I know, I don't want that many in there. I haven't been having anything, really. <laughs> yeah, but where did all this come from? And interestingly enough, after that, I saw my weight stabilize. Wow. And by around day 55, I saw an increase in weight. Wow. And at the end, you know, at the end of this, you know, uh, 69 day fast, I had a net gain of three pounds. Wow. Net weight gain of three pounds. So this is, this is like, this has been like the most ast astonishing thing that it I've experienced really in my life. <laughs> it know? really is. Because people, I think, I think sometimes people don't understand that when we give food, when we give clean information or as less confused information as possible to the body in the form of food, it will do exactly. They will look exactly the way that they have come here to look, right? And so um, I think sometimes they get, we get caught up in wanting to be like or look like or feel like or do like someone mm -hmm. else, right? I mean, we're, granted, we're African American, right? You know, classified as black, right? Um, and so in, in sometimes in our culture, weight gain is appreciated, you know, um, mm -hmm. excess weight is appreciated, not understanding the risks that come along with obesity um, and all the different things. And I mean, not just physical risks, but metaphysical ones too, traumatic things that have impacted people that then pack on weight because of that, right? Or find it challenging to lose those things because of that. And so I think this is amazing because there's always this piece that says, well, I want to keep my weight, right? Um, <laughs> not realizing that in the release comes this abundance, right? Because the, the weight gain isn't the only thing that came as a result of that. The clear mind, the clear skin, all these different things come as a result of that. I absolutely love it. Yeah, well, you know, on the other side around, too, you may find someone, you know, like, for example, one, one of my, my greatest students are Stanley Banks, you know, George Benson's bass player. You know, Stanley Banks was uh, way, way over 200 pounds, <laughs> you know, took my course uh, from one day to the next, went all live, all sun fired, eating, you know, everything. I mean, I actually picked out the day before the class, <laughs> you know, and every, every, every form of pig you could find in the hood. And the next day, flipped the dial, went all live, all sun fired. And, you know, within a year, Stanley had lost about 90 pounds. And, you know, people looking at him like, yo, Stanley, what's what's up, man? Is it the, the A word, man? <laughs> you know, because <laughs> you know what time it was back then. So this is like, you know, we see someone slim down, trim down, and then it's like, oh, yo, what's wrong with you? Never a concern when they ask you if you want something from a fast food place. Never a concern when they're a person's cart next to you is filled with bags, boxes, canned things that you know are just dead food and it's so old, right? Um, you know, so there's never a concern when those things are happening. I literally cringe when I see people's grocery carts do that. Um, but I will say over this pandemic, going back and forth to the farmer's market, it has just been astounding what I've been able to see that a lot of people's carts and different things like that are stacked with just fresh greens, uh, yeah. at least near me, right? At least near me, fresh greens. I was like, mm, I oh, guess yeah. there's no more toilet paper, paper and top ramen to buy, right? There's no more, <laughs> there's no more of that, right? True, <laughs> true, true. Pineapple that's 69 cents or the, the English cucumbers that are now, you know, 15 cents, right? The lemons and wow. limes that are 12 cents, right? The heads yeah. of that are only, you know, 89 cents. So now you get to see, right? You know, an entire mm -hmm. salary for less than a dollar, right? So this is where their currency gets spent on something that's going to really, really give them something back. I almost cried. I was in the farmer's market. I was like, I'm going to go on a juice feast. I don't know what everyone else is going to do. Well, well, well you, you, know, you know something? Let's look behind the scene uh, at that picture. Let's look behind the scene at that picture. Uh, a few months ago, when you had it in abundance, all of this food was still out there. That fresh produce was still out there. So check this interesting scenario. A lot of that were going into, you know, from the grower on a trailer to, to, a, to a terminal market. 
where the trailers pull up, you know, after dark, unload, the merchants come in, you know, 12 o'clock, midnight, and they shop and they take it back to their store, to your neighborhood, to your health food store, to your place, here and this, but you so busy buying all this other stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of these places, they used to throw food away. You go to a wholesale terminal market in Atlanta, in, in New York, anywhere in the U.S., and you're going to see they got, you know, bulldozers coming in, raking up, you know, what may have been equivalent to 10 trailers of, 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 uh, of tomatoes because you weren't buying it like that. Oh, of course, yeah, the prices were ridiculous and all of these other things. But and then, you know, to, to not really affect their market rather than giving it away or selling it at a lower price. Mm -hmm. They just yeah. dump it. Yeah. And now they're stuck. They're stuck. So they have to bring it to marketplace because nature's still throwing food at us. Mm -hmm. These tree foods, mangoes and avocados and tomatoes and cucumbers and what all that stuff is going to keep coming. Mm -hmm. And it's flooding the market because they, because they, they have hogged up the distribution now with what's going on. So only certain places. It's like the big food operators mm -hmm. are dealing with the food cartel who's, who's, who got the middle hand in where the food goes. So now a lot of them, they got to sell the food at good, really, really reasonable prices. Yeah. <laughs> one. So that's one of the reasons why people are jumping more on it. So there's a lot of political and other issues involved in your food basket, mm -hmm. okay? in your food choices. Mm -hmm. And and, 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 and the, the slaughterhouses, a lot of these places are shutting down. Mm -hmm. you know? And, and a lot of the food, a lot of the meats they got is already contaminated. So they're throwing it away. They're throwing milk away, cheese, and all that kind of stuff right now because you have shifted. Because now, see, this is what's going on. And this is what I saw in the 60s, in the 70s. And this is what has fueled where we are today, that some people have even hijacked the movement, call it plant-based and all kind of other stuff, you know, but... It is still the grassroots vegetarian movement from our hood, our communities that have been fueling a lot of this. Because once, you know, the whole thing got opened up, you know, it started really around 50 years ago. But about 35, 40 years ago, the whole thing opened up and the cattle industry took a whipping, <laughs> took a whipping. So they turned to, to, to doing soybeans and stuff like that. Mm. So. It's what we do, yes, with those dollars that you go and buy this food, it's going to drive the economy. So if you buy, you patronize, you choose, and then that pushes the, 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 the supply chain because they're going to try to keep up with you to where the money is. Packaging stuff, bottles and cans and wrappers and all of that stuff, it's expensive. Yeah. A lot of that money you pay for those processed food is the process and and, and, and the food. The package. You're not paying for the food. You're not paying for so uh, so these kind of things. You know, it's you know yeah. It's the energy, the vibration that's in our food that we are actually expressing. You know, so we we really have to really explore. That's why I say, you know, even what we're talking about right now uh, between the both of us, it could take me about six hundred hours to drop all this information. You know, because it's plenty of information out there and, and bridging. I think I'm bridging about four generations right now, you know, because mm -hmm. I started this to say 50 years ago. And mm -hmm. to see how it has evolved over the past 50 years, yes, it's catching on. The, the revolution is still in effect. The yeah. revolution is still moving, you know, it's taking on different tones, different characters, different energy. And yes, we are driving the economy. We are driving them to produce organic. Look at how the organic thing has like really bunched up. Even people that used to do inorganic. And look at how the non the non-meat culture has really gotten them. Like some of the biggest food manufacturers in the entire world are switching to produce plant foods. Yes, they are. We have to be yep. careful. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. The bankers, they co-op the movement, change it from vegetarianism or even, you know, whatever, you know, vegan, you know, that's a whole nother thing that will take a lot more time to deal with. Mm -hmm. And now plant-based. What the heck is plant-based? You know, I come from the era of from plan to plant to planet, period. Mm -hmm. We started planning in the 60s. We went to the plant and we'd be like, seriously, 
reverberating around the planet since the 70s, you know. So, and this is a book that was written by Haki Madhubuti, but I take this context out of a book that was written by Haki Madhubuti called From Plan to Planet. I love it. Yeah, that was the go-to book in the 60s. And our community was written by, you know, brother out of Chicago, has his own publishing company and all of that. So that book is available, even, you know, Amazon sells the damn thing today, mm. you know? So, yeah. So and this somebody can put that in the comments too, from plan to planet. That would be great. So that so that we have it bookmarked and for people who come back and watch this, they'll have access to that as well. Absolutely love this conversation. What do you say to people who, um, you know, cause we know times have changed, things have shifted. Mm -hmm. um, you know, language has shifted quite a bit as well. Right. Some language catches on a little bit more than others in some cases, right? Um, but I want to speak a little bit to the people who say, well, do I have to live in a place where there is fruit, there are vegetables, there are these things in abundance for me to be able to get in order for me to be able to embrace that kind of lifestyle, even if I know that lifestyle is healing, you know? So what do we say to the people who may have, um, who may not, like for me, I have two amazing farmer's markets, right? Within about, one of them within eight minutes of where I live, another one within about 30 minutes, right? Both are outstanding, right? And I can get international things. I can get um, things locally grown near me, right? So I have access, in addition to farmers who live down the road, I have access to know who's making my food, right? So I have that privilege. What do we say to people who simply don't, right? They're city rats. They live in the city. Um, you know, they don't have access to these kinds of things, right? How are the? How do we? How do those people? How can they embrace this kind of lifestyle to be a part of this healing uh, plant movement? Well, you know, I say to them the same way you can find a movie theater outside of your neighborhood, a sports arena outside of your neighborhood, a club to 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 to, to have fun. Us, you know, you can go outside of your neighborhood and find it too. And you're living in a land of convenience, you know? So you could pull up your, your telephone directory. Mm -hmm. Today, you don't even have to even go there. You could just go on your computer. All of you that are listening to us now, you have access to this. So just go on there, you know, wherever you are, you know, fresh fruits and vegetables, period. <laughs> My mm -hmm. neighborhood. And you're right. gonna see the options that come up. You, you'll, be, you'll be so surprised. It might be something right around the corner from you, you know? But still, you know, uh, Hey, it's about our priority. Yeah. You know, it's where our focus is, you know, and you put this on top of your agenda. Food should be on top of everybody's agenda. You cannot get around eating. No, you and didn't. Any, anybody, I have asked the question of, you know, what are the three most essential things for human beings on this planet? What do they say? Food, clothing, and shelter. Mm -hmm. They never say clothing, shelter, and food. Mm -hmm. shelter, food, clothing, food, mm -hmm. they always utter it first. Mm -hmm. So you got your budget, you got your, to work out whatever you got to do. Mm -hmm. Your priority is finding your food. Yep. And if it's not in your neighborhood, if it's not even in, 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 in your city, if it's not in your country, you can get on the line today and you can order it from wherever it is. And it comes to you the same way you order that latest and greatest Nike sneaker. Right. Nowhere, nowhere in any shop in your neighborhood, especially even right now, all those places closed. You go online and you order the thing from wherever. So this is what you got. This is how you got to treat your food. Top shelf. You got any money left? Buy some clothes, buy your sneakers. Yes, in that yeah. order, right? In that order, right? And, and you, you know, but that, you know, then, you know, the same thing, you know, with your shelter and all of that kind of stuff, because we could sleep anywhere. <laughs> you know, some of us are forced to do it, you know, but your food has got to come first and That's you'll awesome. find it. It's there. It's there. You know, and some people talk about they can't afford it or anything like that. They're thinking next thing you see, you see they're over at the fast food joint, mm -hmm. you know, or the slutty, slutty food joint or something like that. You mm -hmm. know, and what do you think? What do you think you're paying for? You pay for convenience and entertainment, food entertainment. You're not buying food for nourishment, for mm -hmm. life. You got that got to come out of your kitchen. 
So you don't have any kitchen culture. You out there trying to figure out what is the latest this and latest that. You go Google and or whatever and find out, you know, how you could not get in your kitchen and start defending yourself. Uh, and you see how uh, right now, you're forced to do that. And the more packaged stuff you use, the more processed stuff you use, the more you're going to become, you know, uh, available to be a victim. <laughs> Because yeah. a lot of the people that are really dropping like this right now, it would be interesting to find out what they really ate. You know, let's mm -hmm. take a survey, you know. Mm -hmm. But anyway, that's all, those are other things. They but, are. Yep. We get, you know, and we could get into a whole bunch of this, you know, but um, I, I really I really am enjoying this conversation, too. Um, I would love for us to talk just a little bit about um in everything that you've done like all that you've experienced um the the number of movements you've started the amount of literature you've put out uh, the number of lives you've changed people you've certified as, as um sunfire chefs as well what's next for you hmm. <laughs> and, and a little bit of time that we have you know. The, the, you know, the, there's there's two you know two phrases I always use. You know, one from the '60s, "A luta continua." You know, the struggle continues. You know, the revolution continues. You know, so we have to keep moving forward. You know, for me, it's it's a journey. It's been a journey, and it's been a journey of of, of generations. You know, that I'm walking in my ancestors' shoes. You know, so we've stopped down in many places around the planet. You know, since my steppings, you know, Atlanta was one of those places. I spent time in Atlanta in the 90s. I was affiliated with the Bronner brothers, the senior, Nathaniel Bronner Sr., you know, Cottonwood, Alabama, the Cottonwood Hot Springs. We had retreats there. We honored Sister Dr. Alvinia Fulton there and quite a few, you know, uh, lustrous ones that came through there with us, you know, that are not here with us today. So we want to constantly give them thanks and praise for all of this, you know, but so, and none of this has been planned. None of this has been like, I want to do this. What's my next step or anything like that? You know, uh, I'm a griot, you know, I'm a griot. So a lot of it is oral historian, that I, is history that I've learned and it's oral history that, that, that I'm continuing. Because a lot of the things that I speak, that I say, that I develop, you know, it's right here and now. So, what I'm going to do tomorrow, what I'm going to do next year, a couple of years from now, you know, the same way, like I didn't know what I was going to do today, this moment, you know, these years of my life, you know, the book is still being written. So I haven't read it yet, you know, and uh, and it's not up to me to write it on my own. Mm -hmm. So I'm really looking forward to being there as well. Whenever, you know, the next step happens, you know, I'm tagging along, you know. I absolutely love it. it. There's such freedom in living in the moment and being completely present, right? Um, I absolutely, absolutely love that. And I, and I think um, even that ha is it's not been lost, but I think it's been, um, you know, uh, put to the side a little bit for some people, you know, especially with everything that's going on. But I think um, one of the blessings that has come out of this this uh, pandemic, right, is that people do get a little bit, a lot of time to really slow down and not plan to go to work in the morning, not um, get yes. up to do all yes. the different things anymore. They get they get to say, wait, who am I really, right? Uh, <laughs> and what do I really want in this moment, in this life right now, you know? Uh, so I just think that's absolutely beautiful. Uh, if there are any questions, let's run to the comments really quickly before we get ready to hop off. Um, she says, in release comes abundance. Absolutely. Um, she said, Tracy says, breaking out your health report card. It's about elimination. <laughs> yes, yeah. We're going to measure anything. Let's measure a health report card. I got to use that, right? Like, <laughs> like you know, that's your report card. Um, let's see here. She says, um, food should be on top of your agenda, said by Dr. Latham. Absolutely. Um, Valine Cannon says he is speaking nothing but facts. And then Keisha says, kitchen culture, I love it. Um, looks like Kwani, 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 uh, Padilla, Padilla 
says um, Brazil, I guess you're representing uh, from Brazil. Um, yeah, I have quite a few students in Brazil. <laughs> nice, that's so amazing. Yes, yes. All right, Shawana says, wow, 72, absolutely. And they say, you look absolutely amazing. Um, and then Lakeisha did capture your quote or something like it, right? She yeah. said, if you wanna cleanse the body, go high. Um, if you wanna send the body to the grave, go low. So something like that, right? He said, if you wanna go that's low, it. go low. She got it. That's it. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Listen, this has been absolutely amazing. You guys, as always, before we part ways, you know, we always change the energy on um, these live streams. Right. And so you want to make sure that you choose someone that you do not know in the comments and that you send them love and light. You type their name out and you say, I'm sending you love and light because now is the time that we needed them. We all needed the post. In addition to that, you steal in your time here together where you gain more knowledge and you become more expanded. Listen, Elder, Baba, thank you so, so much. Any last words before we jump off? Wow, I, I, I'm blessed. You know, I'm honored to be here to share with you and the family. You know, it's uh, this is what fuels me. You know, this is what fuels me. And, you know, it's it's great to be alive and well and kicking right now today. You know, this is a very precious moment. You know, I'm valuing it. I'm treasuring it, you know, because I know, <clears throat> you know, <clears throat> moving forward, you know, everything is going to blossom and open up in such a beautiful way. A lot of us, you know, we, we, we're really uh, recharging right now. It's a recharge moment, you know. Uh, be careful what you expose yourself to, you know, be careful of what comes into your, through your airway waves, you know, myself, look, I have not looked at any television, mm -mm. gone to any movie since the eighties. The last movie I went to was Spike Lee, do the right thing. And ever since then, I've been doing the right thing. You step up and do the right thing. And that is, you know, own your life. Own your brain waves, number one, own it. So don't expose yourself to all of this information that is out there that has really been programming you, that's just looking to sell you something, sell you on, on even death and you buying it. You know, so really, 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 really be careful. You know, measure what goes into your, your entire being, you know, mind, body, and soul, you know, so you have enough in you already. If you're sitting here right now sharing this, you have enough in you already for you to take over, take ownership, take control. You don't have to go find out any more information. You don't have to read another book or anything. Read yourself, mm -hmm. read your life. You know, this is a good time. You know, you don't have a lot of distractions, a lot of people around you, you don't have a lot of options. You know, just really go in, you know, center yourself and take ownership of your life, God, your life. This is what it's all about. <laughs> Thank you so much, so much for that. Listen, everybody, it's been a pleasure sharing time and space with every single one of you guys. I see you guys dropping love and light in the comments. Continue to do that. And until next time, we will see y'all later. Take care. Bye-bye. Okay.